Hello everyone, we're on chapter 3, lesson 6, and this is page 223 in our 6th grade math books. So some things we'll be doing today is it says estimate quotients. So we will estimate by rounding dividends. And we will also estimate by rounding divisors. So it says to determine what a compatible number is, you must first, you must determine what compatible means. Fill in the table below. So compatible, we we're going to say able to exist together with something else in harmony. So some examples, peanut butter and jelly, so P, B, and J. Another example, socks and shoes. But when we talk about math and numbers, we're actually going to talk about two numbers that are easy to compute. And we'll, we'll be going into further discussion on two easy numbers that are easy to compute throughout the lesson. So some things that are not examples, oil and water, because oil and water cannot mix. And the book actually says a handheld system versus a game console. But now that we have the Nintendo Switch, that's actually could be an example now. But moving on to the real world link, it says Latasha and her two sisters want to buy their little brother a remote control helicopter. The helicopter costs $28.90. They decide to split the costs equally. So what number that is a multiple of three is close to $28.90. So we want to talk about compatible numbers of three. So I'm going to go into a little bit of detail the first time, but I'm not going to go into much detail for the rest of the time. So compatible numbers of three. So you think about, so we, we can count by threes, so or mul multiples of threes, so three times one, three times two, three times three. So if I count by threes, I have three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, and 30. I'm going to stop at 30 because I'm above the $28.90. So these are the numbers that are compatible with 3. And there's, there's plenty of more, but like I said, I stopped at 30. What, so what number is a multiple of 3, which is close to $28.90? Well, I have two numbers that is close to $28.90. So that's 27 and 30. But $28.90 is actually closest to 30 because it is only a dollar and 10 cents away compared to 27, which is a dollar and 90 cents away. Or a dollar, I don't know. But it's closer to 30. So we got, so we're gonna change this to 30 dollars. And now to explain, $28 and 90 cents is only a dollar and ten cents away from thirty dollars. It says use your answer from exercise one to determine about how much each each person will pay. Well, each person, if there's three of them, will pay ten dollars because we can do thirty dollars divided by three, and that equals ten. And $30 divided by 3 is much easier than $28.90 divided by 3. And this is why we have to choose a compatible number so we get easier 
easier math. Easier numbers to work with. So I'm going to change that to $10. So we're going to estimate by rounding dividends. To estimate quotients of decimals, use rounding and compatible numbers. And like we said earlier, compatible numbers are numbers that are easy to divide mentally. So in example one, we have to estimate 11 and 75 hundredths divided by three. So I'm going to think about numbers compatible with three. So I got three, six, nine, twelve. And eleven and seventy-five hundredths is pretty close to twelve. So I'm actually just gonna estimate I'm just gonna estimate that number straight to twelve. So instead of doing three and eleven seventy-five hundredths, I'm gonna do three and twelve and twelve because those numbers are much easier to work with. So twelve divided by three is about four. So I know 11 and 75 hundredths is going to be about 4. Example 2, the Jenkins family bought 5 tickets to a charity auction. The receipt shows the total cost of the tickets. Estimate the cost of each ticket. Justify your answer. Well, this is a, a little bit hard to read, but the ticket, so 5 tickets and our total amount this is this reads sixty one dollars and twenty five cents. So we're thinking of numbers compatible with five, so five, ten, fifteen, twenty, and so on. And the closest number that we're gonna do, we're, so we're gonna change sixty one dollars and twenty five cents. We're gonna change that to sixty. So now we can do sixty divided by five equals twelve. So each ticket costs approximately twelve dollars so go ahead and pause the video try the got it a b and c so you want to find numbers compatible with each other in order to divide so for a 49 and 3 tenths divided by 7 i know 49 is compatible with 7 so i'm going to do 49 divided by 7 equals 7 for B, compatible numbers is 25, is 25, 50, 75, 100. So I'm going to change this to 25 and 100. So that's 100 divided by 25, which is going to equal 4. And for C, it says, suppose the Jenkins family decided to purchase six tickets for a total price of $64.50 using a discount. Estimate the cost of each ticket. Justify your answer. So I know off off the bat off the bat I know a compatible number of six is sixty. So I know this is sixty and then if I do one more it's sixty six. So I know sixty four dollars and fifty cents is actually close closer to sixty six dollars. And now that I'm buying six tickets and need to find out how much each costs, we're gonna divide. So six divided by sixty six. I'm sorry, 66 divided by 6 is going to be 11. So it's going to be about $11. And to justify my answer, I'm going to say I estimated $64.50 to $66. and divided by 6 to get approximately $11 a ticket. So that's going to be $11. And always remember to have our units so we have a dollar sign. So now for the rest of the time, instead of doing the dividends, we're going to be rounding our divisors, which is going to be pretty simple because not much is going to really change. So we have 32 divided by 3 and 9 tenths. So what's compatible with 32 and 3 and 9 tenths is close to, and we are going to say 4. So 32 divided by 4 is going to be 8. So that's an easy number to work with. So number 4, 
estimate 56 divided by 6 and 8 tenths. So let's round the divisor to, we're going to do 7, which is a whole number, because 7 is compatible with 56. The dividend is 56, so round 6 and 8 tenths to a whole number that is a factor of 56. I actually got ahead of myself, so the divisor is 6 and 8 tenths. We're going to change that to a whole number. So now we're going to change round 6 and 8 tenths to 7. So we have 56 divided by 6 and 8 tenths. We're going to change that to 56 divided by 7. And we know 56 divided by 7 is going to be 8. So 56 divided by 6 and 8 tenths is about 8. We can check by multiplying. 6 and 8 tenths times 7 is going to equal 54 and 4 tenths. And that is close to 56. So I'm just going to write out my work. That's 56, 7 times 6, 42, plus 5. 7 times 6, 42, plus 5 is 47. Oh, I know, okay, I see what I made. This should be an 8. My apologies. 8 times 8 equals 64. 8 times 4 is 48, plus 6 is 54. And so we have one number to the right of the decimal. I'm going to do one loop to move my decimal place. That's 54 and 4 tenths. So go ahead and pause the video and try to do D and E. So I know 9 and 16 hundredths and 54. 9 is a compatible number that is close. So 54 divided by 9 is going to be 6. And 10 is 75 hundredths and 99. I know that can change. 11 is a compatible number. 99 divided by 11 is going to be 9. So we're going to try example 5. A Pacific leatherback turtle can have a mass of up to 704 and 4 tenths kilograms. An olive ridley turtle can have a mass up to 49 and 4 tenths kilograms. About how many times heavier is the Pacific turtle leatherback turtle? About how many times heavier is the Pacific leatherback turtle? Explain your answer is reasonable. So this time, instead of doing the dividend or the divisor, we're actually going to do the dividend and the divisor. So 49 and, four, 49 and 9 tenths, a close number is 50, and 704 and 4 tenths, that's going to be 700. So now we have 700 divided by 50 is going to be 14. So we're going to say the Pacific Leatherback is about 14 times heavier than the Olive Ridley Turtle. So now that we kind of saw how they worked out example 5, go ahead and pause the video and try to do F. So F says there are approximately 250 and 9 tenths million cars in the United States. Spain has approximately 25 and 1 tenth million cars. About how many times more cars does the United States have more than Spain? So because it says about how many times more, it's going to tell us to multiply. And since we've been estimating our values, 25 and 1 tenth and 250 and 9 tenths, we can find compatible numbers such as 25 and 250. So we're going to have 250 divided by 25, and those are easy compatible numbers, and it's going to equal 10. So we're going to say 10 times the amount of cars. And we have to explain. So our explanation is we used compatible numbers 
compatible numbers. To get an estimation. But that is the end of the notes, so thank you for watching.